in the psalm today, we hear the Lord lament over the fact that God's people, once again, do not listen to or walk in God's ways. And that as a result, they suffer at the hands of their enemies. Throughout the Old Testament, we listen as Israel repeatedly draws closer to God, only to fall away time and time again. In some cases, Israel realizes the mistakes they've made, and they go in search of God, finding that God had never really left their side. God had been there, but God had left them to suffer the consequences of their choices. Other times, God would see that Israel was in no hurry to return. And knowing that if they continued living as they were living, they would suffer even more than they were. So God would send prophets to help guide them back, back into right relationship with God and with one another. Jeremiah was one of those prophets. God sent Jeremiah to tell the people of Judah, the remnant of Israel, that the judgment that they had been warned about in the time of Isaiah was about to fall on them. They would be uprooted and all God had given them would be taken away. To put it in more modern terms, the timeouts and gentle corrections did not work. And it was time for God to get their attention. They were about to get their little tushy slapped. No last minute promise to be good was going to stop it. Because they had shown over and over again that no matter what they said, when that fear of punishment was no longer a concern, they would simply return to doing whatever it is they were doing. We really haven't changed all that much. Why? Because we largely think in the present, not the future. We're more interested in what happens next than we are the long-term effects of our actions. For instance, ever drive down the highway and see someone flick that cigarette butt out the window of their car? It's a small thing. It's biodegradable. Besides, when that butt hits the pavement, the remaining ashes scatter and quickly cool. And only the filter is left behind. And that filter has been used by animals to help line their nests. So, no big deal, right? And 99.9% .9 of the times when someone does this, other than the pollution they cause, probably not. But in that 0.1% of the time, when those hot ashes don't disperse and quickly cool, when they don't fall on the pavement but they fall on dry grass or something else that's flammable, it becomes a big deal. Sometimes a really big deal. But often, not right away. Because if it did, we might think twice about taking that kind of action. But it takes time. And by the time things flare up, we've traveled a long way down the road and never see the consequences of that decision. It was like that with Israel. They knew the possible consequences of abandoning God. But as nothing catastrophic had happened to them, their continued reliance on themselves went unchecked. And as a result, they'd gone a long way down the road by the time things flared up. And the thing they came to dismiss as an idle warning now surrounded them. 
As we will hear over the next month, God's people will cry out to God for mercy. But Jeremiah will tell them that the only mercy God is going to show them is that the punishment they face will not be so bad as to destroy them. They will come out of their struggle knowing that had God not been with them, it could have been a whole lot worse. Knowing that what they must endure could have been worse, if it were not for God's mercy, doesn't sound all that comforting, does it? I mean, really, think about it. Is God saying, well, the beating you are about to get is somehow not going to hurt as much because you know that it's not the beating you could have gotten. That's what it almost sounds like, doesn't it? And today, we wouldn't call that tough love, would we? We'd call that abuse. So what is Jeremiah's message from God really all about? Well, Jesus will sum it up an answer to this question later on when he says, Do not fear those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Instead, fear the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Jeremiah is saying that the punishment they could face if God did not show mercy, was God letting them pay the full price for their sin, their abandonment of God? Now, at first glance, it might seem as God's being just a little petty here, isn't he? Maybe even a little jealous. But if we take a deeper look at it, we see that God is saving them and us from ourselves. If we, like Israel, continue down that path of self-reliance and self-righteousness, the suffering we will ultimately encounter would be unlike anything we've experienced in this world. Now there's an example that helps us understand this, and it's often used, overused by clergy. And if taken too far, it really becomes meaningless, but still, here it goes. When we were young, we were told, don't touch the stove because it's hot. But we have no idea what hot is until we experience it. No parent wants a child to learn what hot is by having a pot of boiling water fall on them, scarring them for life. I think if anyone allowed this to happen or caused it to happen just to teach a lesson, We'd all call that abuse, wouldn't we? But one could say that allowing a child to touch something just warm enough to get the point across would not only teach the lesson, but would do so showing mercy. In that they did not let them experience the full cost, the full effect of that choice. Helping our children to understand the consequences of their choices so that one day when they're on their own, living in the world, and they have a decision to make, they can make it wisely, is one that every parent hopes that they've done well. But in the end, the choices will be theirs. And just as we have had to make tough choices in life, so will they. And they, too, will endure the consequences of the choices they make. But just as parents are there for their children, ready to pick them up when they fall, always offering love and support in both the good times and the bad, Jeremiah says, God will be there for Israel. All of Israel. And Jesus says, God will be there for all of us. Most parents would do just about anything for their children, their family. 
And the bond of family is one that enables us to see beyond one another's failings and see the strengths within. Now I'm not saying this bond is all powerful. Sometimes it can be pretty weak. Sometimes it can even be broken. And when it is, one party or the other must be willing to forgive if there is any hope of restoration. And I think you all know where I'm going with this. God has always been willing, more willing, to restore that relationship than we have. And instead of sending yet another prophet to show us the way back, God incarnate came among us, guiding us, teaching us, reaching out to us, offering us forgiveness in and through Jesus Christ. Just as Israel would not pay the full price of their sin, neither do we. That price was paid on the cross once and for all. Here's a little more good news for you. Even though we may not always think about the full effect of the choices we make, God does. That's why God not only paid that price, but offers mercy to all who would receive it. We may not see it right away. We may have traveled a long way down that road before it is realized. But one day we are told, all will be revealed and all will be made known. <clears throat> Until then, just as we must get out of God's way, we must listen to what God has to say. And I know you've all heard this before. We must continue to strive to know the love of Christ, to grow in our relationship with God, and to go beyond the four walls of this building, helping others do the same by sharing the good news and the difference it makes in our lives. <clears throat>